Welcome, everyone. Great to see you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. O oh Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome. It's December now. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and it has to do with love for children and protection of children and the concept of spiritual offspring, what that might be. And I'm going to relate this to the Christmas story, and you may have heard me connect this before. You know, at Christmas time, there's only so many stories, and so you hear some things repeated, and sometimes we put a new twist on things. So this is something I've connected before to the Christmas story, and it's just a beautiful thing. Let's say there's a baby on the way. Can anyone relate to that? There's a baby on the way, and there are many thoughts and feelings around that. I'll try to repeat what you say, but quick words. What are the kinds of things that you feel when a baby's on the way? Affectional things. Anything? Excitement. Excitement. Hope. Hope. Love. 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 <laughs> Unwavering. Unwavering responsibility. Now, that's a thought thing. I'm going to get to that. But all these things about a baby's coming, affectional things. I can't wait. I'm going to love this child no matter what. I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. Deep love for infants is stirred up when we anticipate the birth of a child. It's just deep and very affectional. Love is stirred up. What kind of head things come to mind with the thoughts of a baby coming? What was your thing about responsibility? Un Absolute responsibility. <laughs> Life is over. No, Life, responsibility. What else? I have, to be an adult now. I have to be an adult now. That's not so much the affectional. That's the, here's what we have to do now. Any others like that? Worry. Worry. Concern. You know, when, when you're, when you're going to have a baby or someone is going to have a baby, <clears throat> all the affectional things are wonderful, but do they plan to go out in the field uh, or in the woods and in, in uh, the middle of January and have a baby? No, 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 no. There are, there's planning that happens. Details. We need to figure out the room or clothing, protective thoughts, plans, or you might be working in a, with a hospital on a birth plan. You know, you need to get things ready. So you can just picture all the thoughts that go around, go in, on in your mind when a baby's coming, and they're different, and, so, and often very conjoined with the affectional feelings about when a baby's coming. They're, they're together. You, you, can, you know, you can't just, oh, we're having a baby, and just fall into love and not plan anything. And you don't just start planning things and not have all these affectional things. They're together as one. Switching for a minute to spiritual births. What, what are spiritual births? Spiritual offspring. Think about 
spiritual offspring. <clears throat> you know, we think about our loves and our thoughts, our will and our understanding, our affectional part and our intelligent and intellect part. These things are two aspects of our being, these two. And they're one, sometimes one dominates and we're working from the understanding more than from affection. The other time, sometimes our affections dominate and the understanding has little to do with it. But these things are to be joined together. The Lord creates us so that we have these two aspects. And when they're joined together, something comes from them. The will and the understanding, our loves and our thinking part joined together and something happens. Let's say you have an idea, a really wonderful idea and you really want it to happen, a creative thought. <clears throat> You're going to do something with this thought, this feeling. I need to do this. I got to do this thing. Well, your understanding kicks in and you start figuring out how to do it. You don't just sit there loving an idea. Well, sometimes we do. We don't, get, we don't bring it to fruition. But we have something, an affection for something, and then we figure out how to make it happen. And that is something born from us. It's, it's something that comes from us. Like a baby, we might have this wonderful idea we want to bring in, into the world, and we figure out how to do it. We often, we, it's in our language. Oh, that's my baby. You know, that organization I started, that's my baby. Or that thing I created, that sculpture I created, that's my baby. It, it, you have affection for it. And then many times, we, uh, there's so many examples of things that come from us and we create and bring into the world. And many of these things grow up and let's say you started an organization, it grows up and, and somebody else is running it because it grew up. You know, some things are turned over to others if they're useful and effective and they're perpetuated. You can just think of so many examples. Well, this is offspring. These are things that come from our spirit. And this is true of the Lord and the church, which is called the mother, the bride and wife. The church is the mother. And so the Lord and the church together, that is the Lord and all people responding to the Lord, produces offspring, spiritual uses. It says this in the work called Married Love or Conjugal Love. <clears throat> that the offspring born from the Lord as husband and father and the church as wife and mother are all spiritual. And in the spiritual sense of the word are meant by, what do you think? Sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, and other names belonging to generation. That no other offspring are born of the Lord by the church needs needs no demonstration, because reason sees it without demonstration. For it is the Lord from whom every good and truth proceeds, and it is the church which receives them and brings them into effect. The church down to the littlest microcosm of a church, you. The church in the smallest form. And all the spiritual things of heaven and the church have reference to good and truth. Hence it is, that in the word, in the spiritual sense, by sons and daughters are meant truths and goods. By sons, truths conceived in the spiritual part of a person and born in the natural. And by daughters, goods in like manner, born in the spiritual part of us and born into the natural. Therefore, in the word, gives examples. They who are regenerated by the Lord are called sons of God, sons of the kingdom born of him. And the Lord called his disciples sons. Nothing else is signified by the male child which the woman brought forth and which was caught up to God, book of Revelation. Because by daughters are signified the goods of the church, therefore the daughters, daughter of Zion, daughter of Jerusalem, daughter of Israel, daughter of Judah is so often mentioned in the word. And by her is signified no other daughter than the affection of good, which is of the church, and so on. And so it's, it's a, there's so many teachings we can find in the Third Testament about 
spiritual offspring. Every single time we see in the Old Testament and the New Testament something about births or begats or sons or daughters, brothers, sisters, it's about spiritual offspring in the positive sense and in the negative sense. The Lord said, he who does not leave brother and sister and son and daughter and wife and follow me is not worthy of me. Well, that's the parts of our mind that are set up in that instance to be negative. The things we bring around us as our evil and false family, evil being the things we love that are not good, falsities being things that we bring into our understanding that are not true. And we, if we bring these around us and create a life for ourselves that we like that's not following the Lord, these are evil sons and daughters or false sons and daughters. Or by correspondence, you could say evil daughters and false sons. But anyway, getting into details. And he says, because it's shocking when you hear the Lord and when you read about the Lord saying, if you don't leave these, you're not worthy of me. Well, these are negative. Get rid of the, your family of negative offspring. The things that come from us, sons and daughters. The things we bring around us, brothers and sisters. And the things we come from, our heredity that we'd like to keep, father and mother. And wife, spouse, the thing we love the most that's not good. He says, leave that behind. Leave your self-interest behind and follow me. So these are spiritual offspring. <clears throat> and it's just beautiful, all the beautiful sayings about children. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. There's beautiful teachings about what come from people. Your children, the things that come from you, are a heritage from the Lord. And so these are ideas around spiritual offspring. And now I want to move this into the idea of when something comes from us, we love it. We love the generation of it. We love procreating it, as it were. Our idea comes to fruition. And then we love to protect it. And we're going to talk about these are two universal spheres with all people and with the Lord. The love of procreating generation and the love of protecting that which is created or procreated. So we're talking about anticipating birth. And of course, we think about Christmas story the anticipation of the birth of the child. You know, that prophecy was so long ago, people were anticipating a child. Unto us, a child is born, says Isaiah. And born of a woman, they knew this from the prophecy in Genesis, ancient, an ancient prophecy where the seed of the woman, it says, there would be a the Messiah, the, the, the uh, anointed one, would be born of a woman and would be a child. And then all the other beautiful prophecies about his name, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Beautiful things about a child. And all the, so the anticipation of the birth lasted for centuries and centuries the anticipation of the one who would be born into the world to save the human race. Just a beautiful anticipation story. When we think about the birth of a child, we think about something that's going to happen in nine months, and we're just very excited. And it's just sometimes it seems like an eternity because our love and our affections are stirred up so much. Think about people who really were anticipating the birth of the one who would come and save all. And even... Jewish women at some point, imagine the ones who really looked at the prophecies. Perhaps there were some who felt of stirring desire that maybe the Savior would be born to them. And just think about that thought, because the prophecies were very strong. So now I'm going to talk about these universal spheres. Married love, conjugal love, 386. From the Lord proceed two universal spheres for the preservation of the universe in the state created, <clears throat> of which the one 
is the sphere of procreating, and the other, the sphere of protecting the things procreated. The divine proceeding from the Lord is called a sphere because it goes forth from him, surrounds him, fills both worlds, the spiritual and natural, and brings into operation the effects of the ends which the Lord predestined at creation and for which he provides after it. This, that means predestined for heaven. No one is predestined to hell. That's all by our own choice. All that flows out from a subject and encompasses and surrounds it is called a sphere. As, for example, the sphere of light and heat from and around the sun, the sphere of life around a person, the sphere of a fragrance of a plant around it, the sphere of the attraction of a magnet, and so on. But the universal spheres here treated of are from and around the Lord, and they proceed from the sun of the spiritual world in the midst of which he is. From the Lord through that sun proceed a sphere of heat and light, or what is the same thing, a sphere of love and wisdom for the bringing operation of the ends into operation of ends, which are uses. That these two universal spheres make one with the sphere of, of married love and the sphere of love of infants. And so it talks about the divine sphere of looking to generations and their beginnings and afterward to their progressions is called the sphere of protecting what is procreated says the love that the sphere of the love of infants is a sphere of protection and support of those who cannot protect and support themselves. So there's the one sphere, the love of creating, the love of procreating, and this strong sphere of protecting that which is born. It is, the, it is the divine providence that is meant by the sphere of protection and support of those who cannot protect and support themselves. For it is provided from creation that things created shall be preserved, guarded, protected, and supported. Otherwise, the universe would go to ruin. With living creatures to whom is left freedom of choice, this cannot be done by the Lord immediately. Therefore, it is done immediately through his love implanted in fathers and mothers. And it goes on to say, from the rational cause alone, in the absence of love breathed in and inspiring it. In other words, this, these loves of protecting without the love breathing into it, or without the compulsion of, this, of the law from love, a person would no more provide for infants than would a statue. <laughs> so they're together, love and protecting. These are some highlights from Luke. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. Also in Luke, came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own place. It talks about Joseph and Mary going, and then she brought forth, forth her firstborn son. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people and all of the following. So you see, in Luke, also to Zacharias before that part of, of Luke, Angel Gabriel appears to Zacharias. Angel Gabriel appears to Mary. Angel, angel Gabriel doesn't say, an angel stood before them, and, the, and then a host of angels around. That was most likely Gabriel, the announcing angel. And it's announcing, announcing, announcing. Freely you receive these announcements. 
The shepherd said, let us go and tell others for their free choice. And now a couple of highlights from Matthew. While Joseph, but Joseph, not being a just man and not, to, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And he also said, you will call his name Emmanuel. And then it says, also the wise men came, and after the wise men's story says, then being divinely warned in a dream they should not return to Herod, they departed for their country another way. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, rise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And so he went down to Egypt and was there till the death of Herod, and then it says, when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. And so he went, and then it says, another Herod was reigning in his place. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. So you hear the difference in the one story Angels appear and before their eyes and announce Gabriel, the host of angels, Gabriel, Gabriel. And then in Matthew, they're, they're not appearing. They're in the dreams. Joseph, often Joseph, and then the wise men. And the angel appeared to them in a dream saying, go this way, do that, take them to Egypt, go home a different way, don't go there, go here. Instructions. Completely different. The Luke story is angels appear and it's love and affection. A baby's born. A baby's born. And Matthew, do this, do that. Protect the child. Go there. Don't go there. Herod is there. Protecting the child. And so the one is like the love of procreating. And the love that comes from each one of us to have something happen. This is pure affection. The other, Matthew, is like, protect, take care of, bring it up. One is nurture and love. The other is, do this, do that, and protect and take care of and raise up the right way. They're pictured in these stories. We still see our children anticipating Christmas. And it's a really beautiful thing to not only feel that ourselves, but to see it in our children as they grow up and we start to see them anticipating Christmas and their love they have. And yes, they are, they are anticipating presents and all the trimmings of Christmas. Of course they are. And of course we did. And of course we are. But now and then we see a child talking about the Lord and the baby Lord or the star and all these things that they've learned from the Lord's word. And it just touches us deeply to see that affection. And sometimes they want to do something about it. I'm going to make an ornament. I'm going to, I'm going to make a little manger. Whatever it is, they want to do something to take care of the Lord. And they want to give a gift, and they're anticipating what the joy someone might have of something they do. And just these things are reflected all the time. The love of creating and the love of making it happen and protecting what you've created and making it so. And these two spheres are the spheres of Christmas. I just want to end by saying, uh, I wrote a little thing and I wanted to remember. Um, one time Annette and I, and she says, hello, she, she's on Zoom. She couldn't be here today because of a virus. We were shopping in a bookstore and she showed me this beautiful book for children called Room for a Little One. A Christmas Tales. Anybody know that one? Room for a Little One by Martin Waddell. One cold and wintry evening, kind ox shares his stable beside the inn. Each tentative visitor is told, there's always room for a little one. So a little, one at a time, little animals come. Can we stay here? 
there's always room for a little one. In succession, kind ox gives shelter to old dog who comes. There's always room for a little one. Then stray cat comes. There's always room. Then small mouse comes. Finally, he welcomes tired donkey who is accompanied by a weary couple, Joseph and Mary. Predators and prey, dog, cat, mouse, are sheltered together in a spirit of generosity and peace. And then they witness the birth of another little one, baby Jesus, and it's just a beautiful book. And so as parents, as grandparents, as we know, of course, you anticipate birth and there's always room in our heart for another one and another one and another one. This is a sphere that is with birth parents, Adoptive parents, it's the same sphere. Someone is coming to us and to our home, and we're going to love and take care of that new one. And that is the spirit of Christmas for our hearts. Anticipate the birth of the Lord into your heart. How do we nurture that and protect that in our lives as we grow up spiritually? Protect what was born in us when we felt the Lord in our lives. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.